Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here today at Book Blather. Uh, if you're new here, I'm Dave, this is Olive, and we try to have a little fun while we talk about the books we've read or acquired recently to help spread the joy of reading. So today we wanted to do a little bit of a mini wrap up. We're gonna do a few of these. We, we read, we have a number of books that we read while, while we were laid up and that we need to talk to you about. We read books of all different types. Um, so we figured we'd split them up into little chunks. Uh, we just talked about um, American Cannibal because we wanted to get that one up on release day. Um, so today we figured we, we talked to you about, we read a couple short horror books among the different types of books that we read. So we figured we'd talk to you about those two today. So the first one that we wanted to talk about which was a, a really cool surprise, was Sleeping Celeste by Alana K. Drex. So Alana is another one, another, um, you know, new uh, author of short horror fiction that we discovered on Instagram. And we'll, we'll link um, her Instagram account below. And um, that's how we discovered her. And when we first read her, I, I think Alana has also published um, some short fiction, maybe a couple short stories and like anthologies. I'm, I'm not sure we haven't read any of those. But we, the first thing we read from Alana was a very short work called The Scampering. And this I wasn't quite sure what to make. Uh, of Alana when we read this because um, it was a, it was good but it was very short it's like you can get it on Kindle or um, or, or you can get a paperback but it's only like 25 pages long so I don't know if you would call it like a novelette or something and she co-wrote it with um, A.W. Mason I believe and um, that um, that story was that story was fun it was it was it was it was a very unusual story. It was it was pretty crazy. It was it was really horry and it was funny, um, but it was re really really short. And so it wasn't really you couldn't really get too good of a feel for Alana's writing from that. Um, it, it looked promising to me, so I knew I would try the next thing that she put out. But um, I wasn't quite sure what to make of her yet. Um, so then she put out this book not that long ago called Sleeping Celeste. And hey, Olive, it's Sleeping Celeste. It's not Sleeping Olive. Sleeping Celeste. You need to pick me up here. Come on. You can't have too many of these pick-me-ups, you know. Oh. Some days you got to bribe her to, to, to keep focused here. All right. So this book, um, this book was, was um, uh, I don't want to say a, a, a pleasant surprise. It's not really a surprise, but it was just, I was surprised how, how much fun I had, how, how much I liked this book. Um, so this is so it's set in the late 1800s, but but that's not really too relevant for the story. And it's about this um, this woman Marie Marie Marie, and so her daughter has died, and um, and so she goes to visit her in this sort of um, it's like a see through um, tomb or crypt. I don't know what you'd call it exactly, but um, and and she goes and visits visits her there to look to to see her. And she is the only one that knows, you know, like that her daughter's sleeping and, and that, you know, um, you know, she's not really dead. And so um, it's a short book, so we can't give away too much. But basically, you know, she meets one, someone that leads her, you know, to explore, you know, um, helping her daughter. And um, and then this story just takes like a total left turn and gets nuts. Um, th this this book reminded me of two other horror novellas that are that are that are kind of famous that uh, made me think of both of them for two different reasons. It made me think of Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones, if anybody has read that, um, because that one was I went into that book thinking it was about one thing and like midway through or, or you know like a third of the way through or something all of a sudden it just totally took a left turn and I was like whoa and it had nothing it was like totally not what I thought it was going to be and it was a crazy ride that's what this was I I I I I I thought I wasn't sure how excited to be about the theme when I went into it, and then it just it it just it just went nuts, and it was pretty it was pretty cool. Um, the other thing that was really neat about this was it it, um, it reminded me the other book it reminded me of was Keelan Patrick Burke's Blanky, because um, it, it it was that the narrative was that style. It was a it was a first person narrative from the perspective of the individual 
that is descending into madness. Um, and I, this is a really cool perspective. I haven't read a lot of books like that. Um, Blanky was one of them, and this was another. Um, and so I, I, I just thought that was a really cool. It's a really cool narrative style, in, in my opinion. Um, so that was that was fun to see. Um, so yeah, this book, um, we had a great time with this book. This was the, I love this book. I mean, you know, it's not it's not a Pulitzer winner. It's a, you know, it's a short horror novella, but um, but it was if you're looking for a good. Um, a good fast um, horror thrill ride. This was pretty. This was pretty good. I, w I would highly recommend this. We, was, we enjoyed this a lot. Um, how you doing? You still awake? Okay. All right. Now the other, the next one that we, the other sh short horror book that we read is Code Red by Regina St. Clair. Um, anybody that's familiar with horror, I'm sure knows Regina St. Clair. Regina St. Clair is a pretty um, prolific author um and she she's also the editor of um a horror anthology of booktubers called um there's been there's been a few of them the third one just came out um called lurking in the dark um but uh she she does that at this point she's been doing it annually um and um so she but she you know she writes a lot of her own stuff she's a great author and this is her latest one this came out in October, and she was nice enough to, to send us a copy. Um, and this was this was a, this was this was fun. This was one of those just fun, um, crazy vampire romps, basically. So it's set it's set in um, Southwest Virginia. So it's kind of like this um, rural mountain community. <clears throat> and um, and so the main character is this young woman, and she and and so. Um, there's this, uh, what was it called? Wormwood Asylum um, that treats people with different, um, you know, um, psychological, different psychoses. And, um, and so there, there, it starts off with um, a new patient um, being brought there who, um, you know, thinks, they think he has an obsession with drinking blood, but lo and behold, you know, he's actually a vampire. I don't think that's really a spoiler. <laughs> you can tell from the cover. Um, but, and look at that cover, by the way, is that not like the most awesome cover? Um, I think P Keelan Patrick Burke did this cover. I think this was Elderman Design. Elderman Design. I think that's Keelan Patrick Burke. I don't know. Correct me if some, if you know differently, but, um, uh, he does pretty cool covers. And so, um, so th there's this Wormwood Asylum and, um, the patient gets delivered there. And of course that sparks, um, uh, well, you, you you know what it sparks within within the asylum. It's, it's within that asylum itself, and and there's a new mysterious visitor that comes to town, and so this sets off you know these main characters, this woman and her boyfriend and um, her grandpa, who's like this funny grumpy old guy, and um, and then the local sheriff that forms a friendship with uh, with the grandpa. And, uh, and so they basically team up to do battle against these, these forces that have come to their small rural town, um, and, and infected their small rural town. And, um, and it, so it was really good. It was basically like an action packed, like I said, an action packed vampire romp. Um, um, but there was also this element to it, you know, the woman in the beginning of it, the, the young woman that we meet, I forget her name, but, um. I don't remember, but or was it Jess or I don't remember her name, but, um, she, she, um, um, is, is like, she's kind of like lamenting the fact that she's like stuck in this, um, you know, small rural town and, and your grandpa doesn't want her to leave, but she kind of wants to get out of there. And so there's kind of that little moral of the story too, about, you know, always thinking that the grass is greener on the other side and, and sh being attracted by shiny things and shiny people when they come along. Um, but that, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, um, just, you know, you know, old time traditions and values in your hometown are, are, are worth something, you know? So, um, there was that little piece as well. So yeah, this was a fun book, you know, it was, it was pretty good. Um, again, you know, not a Pulitzer, that's not the type of a book that it is. Um, you know, the, some, some, uh, typographical stuff in it, but that's going to happen with any independently uh, published book. But Regina, obviously knows how to write very well. So it's very well written. That stuff is not distracting at all. Um, very well written book. Um, so yeah, we, we would recommend it if you're just looking for a good time. And th this one's not that, it's a little longer than the other one, but this one's not that long either. I forgot to mention, I think that, um, I, I don't know if, um, 
I don't know if um, Alana K. Drex independently published Sleeping Celeste. I'm not seeing a publisher on it. So maybe she independently published this one as well. And the, um, and the cover of this was uh, by Christina from Trueborn Design. Um, another pretty cool cover. Um, so that's, uh, that's it. Those are the two horror books that we read and we'll save all the other stuff. We'll be coming out with a bunch of other videos to uh, review the other types of, of things that we read, um, during our, uh, during our forced hiatus. So, um, as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you get notified the next time Olive says it's okay to upload another video. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you read either of these books or you're planning to, um, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear what you think. Um, or if you don't want to leave anything substantive, leave Olive a puppy emoji. She always likes to see those. So we'll see you soon. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you next time.